Hi everyone, Vacha here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. And in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Alesis Master Control Studio Interface. This is an all discontinued unit. It is a Firewire audio interface and surface control built in one. Now, you are, if you are one of the proud owners of this unit, or if you are thinking of buying a second-hand one, and you're not sure whether it's going to work under Windows 10, because the last driver available for this unit is Windows 7, and you can download it from the LSE's website. I will leave a link in the description where you can find it. And if you are asking the question, will it work? Well, the quick answer to give you, and I hope that's what you are here for, the answer is, yes, it does. It actually does work under Windows 10 64-bit. Well, that's it. You can stop watching now. You can go and give it a try. But if you are interested in a little bit more information of what it is and how it works, well, I'll just do a quick uh, brief overview of the product and demonstrate how it works in Cakewalk by BandLab. There we go. Let's give it a try. Well, the unit itself is a Firewire connection audio interface and surface control. It does come with eight analog inputs, two of them being microphone level and line level input as well. It also has six analog outputs. So, and that also controls the outputs. So you can have three different speakers, powered speakers connected to its output and using the A, B and C, you can switch between those outputs as well, which is quite handy. And it also comes with ADAT input. So you can extend this unit for another eight inputs. It doesn't have ADAT output, but it does have ADAT input. It also has SPDIF input and output, which is your eight input uh, and output as well, seven and eight. And it uh, also has MIDI input and output, the five pin DIN MIDI uh, at the back of the unit. Now, even though it only comes with two microphone level inputs, which also support 48 volt phantom power, but those two microphone inputs also have inserts. So that means you can actually connect an outboard compressor or EQ uh, and in line before the signal is uh, converted into digital. So that's a great option to have, which is not found in many of uh, this type of audio interfaces and surface controllers. One example uh, that comes close, but not as good as this one, is the uh, M-Audio's Project Mix I.O., which I do have a video about it, and I'll leave a link in the description if that interests you. Um, you can watch that series as well. But this one has a lot more features. And some of the other extra features it has is that it's got two headphone outputs, which are independent, not only volume control, but you can also select what audio from your DAW uh, go to those headphones. Now, as a surface control, you can control everything in your DAW, but at the same time, pressing direct monitoring, now you are actually looking at the input of the audio interface. So now this is actually controlling the level of your inputs to direct monitoring onto your headphones. So you can adjust different levels from different microphones uh, when you are tracking or live recording um, and you can adjust all of that. So now these are the eight analog inputs and by switching the, the other bank, now we are looking at the levels of the ADAT inputs of the eight. So by switching to that one, these are my, let's do it this way, my analog inputs and here are my ADAT inputs. So it's quite handy to be able to listen direct with zero latency on our headphones as you are tracking. Part of the surface control is also our rotary knobs. These are uh, infinity rotary knobs and you can assign anything you want to them. There's eight of them, of course, for each bank. And by using these three buttons at the top, you can assign whether they're uh, controlling your panning, or they're controlling your sand, or they're controlling your track levels or effects levels and so on to control things in your DAW. Of course, you can also select um, each channel um, for uh, record options, solo, mute, and so on. 
and as you saw if in direct mode we can solo and mute things for direct monitoring as well and later on we will see some of those options available as i run my uh, cakewalk by band lab and connect to it and we'll see how it actually works and lastly we have a control section here with transport control um, zoom and scrub as well as a, a timeline option and with the added option of talkback so if you do have separate live room and you want to talk to the musicians you can press the talkback from the control room and talk to them and they'll be able to hear so without sacrificing any additional microphone input it's got a built-in microphone with talkback functionality as well additional buttons there's eight of them and they double up by pressing the buttons a and b so you have 16 function buttons that you can set and assign in your daw to do whatever you want to do like click track turning on and off loops markers whatever you wish you can control and set them up within itself already comes with lots of presets for different daws and cakewalk is one of them you can also control pro tools cubase logic and samplitude and few others now studio one is not included because studio one didn't really exist or just started to exist when this was manufacturing but setting it as a Mackie control uh, within studio one you are able to control the faders the, uh, the uh, pans rotary knobs and all of the other options um, as a standard and you can assign the buttons to whatever function you want in studio one save that setting and it's good to go right that's enough about the unit let me fire up uh, cakewalk by band lab and we'll do a quick demonstration of how the project works and how the faders are controlled in your daw okay here we got the uh, cakewalk uh, open let's uh, open a project and as you can see the faders straight away come up to the fader levels of my project uh, that i have and let's have a quick look let's say let's select the first one which is my kick and i should be able to adjust that there we go i can adjust them and of course i can adjust both both of them at the same time or uh, these two however uh, i want and then let's select the first one let's select the panning control of my snare bottom and that's how we can control it let's select that track let's arm for recording so we can see snare bottom is now arm for recording we can also solo that one you can see with the red uh, green button there and we can also mute that one and easy as that so we've got all of those control there uh, we also have at the top let's uh, see the timeline and we should be able to move the cursor by using the scroll and we can go backwards by steps and forward by steps as well um, and let's zoom in there we go i need to select it so now we can also zoom in and make the tracks wider and smaller as well as you can see and we can make the tracks wider again so most functions do work as expected and um yeah i'm not sure if i'll be able to play because my video capture is um holding on to the um audio interface as well as a uh, cakewalk yep now we're gonna get an error saying that it's not supported because obviously the audio as these devices is now being controlled by two different software cakewalk and my video capture screen capture so um, one of them has given up but as you can see it all works without any problem without my video capture screen there is no problem controlling uh, the audio transport as well and if you want to go to the next bank of uh, tracks let's see um, my last solo there the i can control and yep there it goes all works perfectly so let's have a quick look of how it's actually set up going into preferences uh, as devices audio devices i've got my lss um, uh, 
master control selected and it has multiple inputs uh, the um, the mic line as well as ADAT inputs and SPDIF are available and for output you got DO1, DO3 uh, and DO5 which are the three A, B and C outputs that we can actually use and the uh, other thing that we want to be able to control is uh, surface control under devices we need to select master control MIDI port and control port MIDI is the MIDI output at the back and control port is the actual control surface once we have them enabled then we can control surfaces and you can see I've got one here already set up and to add it's quite easy you can add new control surface and here you need to select key control for uh, uh, for the control surface and then master control control port not the MIDI port as your input and for your output as well and then once you click OK you'll get this line added and once you click OK here it's ready to go without much setting of course as I mentioned you can control and reprogram all of your uh, available buttons to control in your DAW as well well I hope this video was informative enough for you and if it was make sure you give me the thumbs up and if you have any further comments uh, use the comment section you can ask me questions there I'll be able to answer them for you I do have it out uh, I connect it every now and then so um, if you have questions in the comment section more than happy to help you out there until then as always thanks for watching and have a great time making music I'll catch you in the next one